Hello, my name is Carsten Pater. I'm working here for the Department of Earth Observation. Um, I studied geography and uh, after my studies I went to Vienna and Austria, did my PhD um, at a technical university uh, with uh, Professor Wolfgang Wagner on Sommerschule retrieval from Envisa data and then I returned to Vienna and uh, working here for the uh, remote sensing group. Um, I'm mainly working with radar data and uh, the retrieval of um, biophysical parameters like soil moisture or uh, biomass. Today I want to speak about uh, soil moisture retrieval, how it can be measured and uh, what is the physical background of the measurement, especially the TDR measurements. But first of all, um, let's have a look uh, at the soil. So what is a soil? A soil is a weathered and fragmented outer layer of the Earth's terrestrial surface. And it has been formed initially through the disintegration, the decomposition and recomposition of mineral material contained in exposed rocks by physical, chemical and biological processes. They are further conditioned by the activity of uh, organisms, plants and animals. And in the end it culminates in the formation of a characteristic soil profile. Every soil contains water and soils are in fact a mixture of uh, solid, uh, liquid and uh, gaseous constituents uh, like minerals, uh, organic matter, water and air. And under natural conditions nearly every soil contains some amount of water. Uh, soil moisture is the volume fraction of water held in the soil against gravity or another definition is um, soil moisture is the amount of water which evaporates uh, within 24 hours uh, when drying soil samples at 105 degrees Celsius. So why is soil moisture that important? Well, um, the knowledge of soil moisture is important because um, uh, it is uh, essential for vegetation growth. Um, it's the principal constituent of uh, growing plants. It's required for photosynthesis. Uh, it's a solvent and carrier of food nutrition for plant growth. It regulates soil temperature, uh, is important for microorganisms in the soil, which require water for their metabolic activities, and uh, also soil forming processes and weathering is depending on water. In a broader view, the natural soil moisture is uh, important because um, it controls the partitioning of incoming solar radiation into sensible and latent heat fluxes and it controls the partitioning of precipitation into infiltration and surface runoff. How can we measure soil moisture? There are many ways of measuring soil moisture. Um, so you can uh, directly measure soil moisture in the field by taking soil samples, or you can uh, do indirect measurements by measuring uh, a specific uh, variable which uh, allows conclusions on uh, the moisture content in the soil. And one of these um, uh, principles our methods we want to uh, show you today is the TDR uh, principle and uh, TDR stands for time domain reflectometry. This can be used uh, for measuring uh, moisture content of natural media like soils and uh, it's uh, basically relying on the uh, measurement of the propagation velocity of an electromagnetic energy pulse um, in the soil and it relies on the fact that the uh, transit time measurement of an electric signal is uh, determined by the average moisture constant along the so-called waveguides of the sensor. So what are the waveguides? Here we have a, a small um, overview of a setup for uh, doing time domain reflectometry measurements. So it consists mainly of a pulse generator, an oscilloscope, and in the soil we have um, uh, three so-called probes or waveguides, which are metal sticks and um, uh, they uh, are conducting materials. How does uh, time domain reflectometry work? So in the first step, the pulse generator is uh, generating an electric pulse, which is traveling along cables uh, to the soil sensor. And in the second step, this uh, pulse is reaching uh, the point where the uh, waveguides are inserted into the soil and this will generate a signal response which can be seen on the oscilloscope. 
then the uh, signal or the electric pulse is traveling along the waveguides into the soil. And as soon as the uh, signal is reaching the end of the waveguides, another uh, response signal is uh, generated and um, can be uh, seen on the oscilloscope. The TDR measurement uh, produced uh, two responses, uh, which can be seen in the oscilloscope. And the propagation speed um, is determined from the time uh, elapsed between the two, uh, these two responses. So to say something about uh, moisture content, uh, we need to know the propagation speed of the pulse along the waveguides. Uh, to get this speed, um, we have the two responses, um, which can be seen on the oscilloscope. And we know the time which has been elapsed between these two uh, points on the uh, oscilloscope. And when knowing the propagation speed, we can uh, draw conclusions on the relative permittivity. And this uh, gives us information about the average moisture content. And as a rule of thumb, um, you can say that the smaller the propagation speed, the higher the relative permittivity and uh, also the moisture content in the soil. Now that we know how the general setup of a TTR device is, uh, looks like, we also want to know what is happening uh, behind the scenes, so what is actually happening. And uh, yeah, the waveguides we're inserting into the soil are electric conductors. And when a current flows uh, through a conductor, there are electric and magnetic, uh, magnetic fields around uh, this conductor. And so these electromagnetic waves are traveling through a medium. And uh, in any case, they will lose energy. And this uh, loss of energy can be called attenuation. The soil can be seen as a so-called lossy dielectric medium. So that means that we uh, look at the so-called bulk uh, properties of the medium to characterize its properties. Uh, and we are not looking at the properties of its individual constituents. So we are looking at this uh, medium as a whole. And the properties of such a medium uh, uh, used to describe the interactions of the electromagnetic field and the medium are uh, first, the electric permittivity, uh, second, the magnetic permeability, and uh, third, the electric conductivity. So at the moment, we can uh, just neglect uh, properties number two and three, so the uh, magnetic permeability and the conductivity, and we only have a look at the electric permittivity. The electric permittivity is usually operated with the Greek letter epsilon, and it defines uh, if and how an electric field can pass or travel through a medium. And it is also a measure of the electric polarizability of a material. So here we have a little formula which says epsilon equals epsilon r and epsilon zero. Epsilon zero is the so-called relative permittivity of free space or vacuum. And epsilon r is the relative permittivity uh, we actually are interested in. So for a medium which absorbs the energy from a wave we have to use a complex number to represent the electric constant. And this is shown on this slide. So here we have the complex electric permittivity and uh, consists of a real part and an imaginary part where the imaginary part uh, describes the energy losses and the, the electric constant we are actually interested in is represented by the real part of this um, formula. So the dielectric constant um, can be seen as a material, cons uh, material constant, which is uh, a unitless uh, constant. So we have um, no a unit like meters or kilograms or whatever. And at one gigahertz and uh, 20 degrees Celsius, um, the dielectric constant of uh, water is 80 and uh, the dielectric constant of soil is uh, 2.6. And uh, when we add uh, water to a soil, the uh, dielectric constant will tr uh, increase tremendously. And this is also the reason why radar systems are actually that uh, sensitive to uh, moisture content. At the right hand side, there is a table with some typical values uh, of dielectric uh, constants for materials we uh, find in nature. And uh, in literature, you will often uh, read. Uh, at radar frequencies when uh, something is uh, written about the dielectric constant. So what does it mean? It actually means that uh, the dielectric constant uh, depends on the frequency of the electromagnetic waves or pulses. Um, 
And uh, this is also shown in the diagram. You can see at the right hand side, in this case for water at a temperature of 20 degrees. And we see that the uh, dielectric constant, the real part of the dielectric constant, decreases rapidly with uh, increasing uh, frequency. To come back to our TDR measurement, there is another relation which is uh, important. And this is shown in this uh, diagram here at the left hand side. And this relation is uh, the relation between the wave velocity and the dielectric constant. Um, the higher the dielectric constant, uh, the slower the wave velocity. And uh, when knowing this, um, we can actually uh, draw conclusions on the moisture content of the soil. So now we know what is uh, going uh, on behind the scenes when doing time uh, domain reflectometry. Um, so I want to summarize it uh, in three points. So electromagnetic waves uh, can propagate in natural media like a soil. Um, the, the propagation speed depends on the dielectric properties of this material. And when we know the propagation speed, uh, we can draw conclusions on the water contents via the dielectric constant. So the question is now, um, why does adding water to a soil has such a pronounced effect on the dielectric constant? And this is because of the special um, properties of water. Uh, so water is a, a molecule consisting of uh, oxygen and uh, hydrogen, H2O. And water is a so-called polar molecule. And um, this leads uh, to the fact that water behaves like a dipole. So what is a dipole? A dipole is a pair of equal and opposite electric charges or magnetic poles of opposite sign separated uh, especially by a small distance. So on this, on this slide we have a, a figure and this shows how the uh, water molecules acting as dipoles are oriented if no electromagnetic field is applied. In this case they are randomly arranged and as soon there is an electromagnetic field impinging on this uh, water, on the water surface, on the soil surface, um, they will react on an external electric field and they will align uh, with the field lines. And as soon as we remove the field or switch it off, they will swing back. This reaction of the uh, dipoles on the uh, presence of an electromagnetic field um, leads to uh, uh, the fact that uh, we can measure a high dielectric constant and uh, uh, for open water surfaces we have the fa uh, fact that the incident electromagnetic waves are almost completely rejected. So when talking about the so-called orientation polarization of water there are two important uh, facts we need to know. The first one is uh, that this polarization effect depends on temperature. It means if we have um, ice or temperatures uh, below zero, the dipoles are immobilized, so they cannot follow uh, any electric ma electromagnetic fields, and um, we also cannot um, uh, measure soil moisture with radar or with a TDR sensor. The, the second uh, important fact we need to know is that uh, depolarization also depends on frequency. Um, the dipoles uh, swinging back and forth uh, can only follow the electromagnetic field up to a certain frequency, and this frequency is called the relaxation frequency. Above this uh, threshold, the dipoles cannot follow uh, the electromagnetic field oscillations any longer. And this uh, relaxation frequency in the case of water is around 10 gigahertz.